I want to share some things that the Lord's been talking to me about concerning the vision for 2023, today's Vision Sunday. And so we do this uh, once a year. Last year we did it twice. I think it was last year we did it twice because we had an update in the middle of the year. So much was happening. But uh, I think that was last year. But we, we want to uh, continue. How many of you know without, the Bible says in uh, Proverbs 29, I remember the verse, it says, without a vision, the people perish. One translation says they run wild. That just simply means they have no direction. They just, just, just run in different directions, no, no direction. Um, God gives uh, leadership over uh, ministries in order to uh, bring unity around a particular vision. Uh, and vision is very important. The Bible says God spoke to Habakkuk in Habakkuk chapter number 2. He said to Habakkuk, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. And so it's important that, uh, and, uh, that it's made plain. It's important that it's written down. It's important that it's clearly communicated. It's important that it is shared, that leadership shares vision. In fact, I've learned over the years that that's one of the biggest attributes of leadership is communicating uh, a united vision that we can rally around in faith and join our faith to. We all have individual lives. We all have things God spoke to us about in our personal lives for us to carry out and things that we have in our heart, uh, things we know God wants us to lay hold of. Uh, and fulfill for our own lives, and that's right and, and appropriate. But we all are to be to get, we all are to be gathering together around uh, God ordained leadership. You know, there's fivefold ministries in the Bible: five, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, and those are leadership positions in the body of Christ. Yeah. And there's to be, uh, you know, in the body of Christ, we're not to be just a bunch of lone rangers out doing our own thing, you know, you know just disorganized. Uh, no army in the natural is ever going to win without organization. People struggle with what they call, I don't believe in organized Christianity. Well, what do you believe in, disorganized Christianity? No, people, people don't know God is a God of order. And uh, we, need to, we need to know that. And so, but uh, if we organize around a God-given vision uh, and, and uh, join our faith unitedly to it, we can do more in unity together than we can individually. Uh, all of us individually, although we all have individual things we do. But um, so I wanted to just briefly say that, you know, the Bible says God told uh, uh, Moses, He said, in Hebrews 8, 5, he said, Make all things according to the pattern shown thee on the mount. Now that's when God was talking to him in the Old Testament about how to build the tabernacle. Uh, then they patterned the temple after that as well. But then he said, Make it according to the way I showed you on the mount. So God told Moses exactly uh, how to uh, build what he was to do, what the plan of God was for his life. And uh, he carried that out exactly according to the pattern shown him on the mount. The term mount means because he was up on a mountain whenever that cloud came down, you remember. And he was in the glory for 40 days. And so really you could say, make all things according to the pattern shown you in the Spirit. Because that's where he was up on the mountain. He was in the Spirit. You can't live 40 days or without drinking or eating unless you're in the Spirit. <laughs> So that's where he was, and he said, make, the, make, the, uh, make all things according to the pattern shown you when you were in the Spirit and saw what you were supposed to do. And so that's the assignment of God-given leadership is to fellowship with God, find out what the plan is, because God has a plan. We're not to be formulating a plan. We're to be carrying out what God says the plan is. I don't have the, somebody said, well, you know, uh, you know, pa pastor just does what he wants. I don't have the right to do what I want any more than you have the right to do what you want. We all call him Lord, and that means we say, whatever you want, that's what we want. I had certain plans. I had certain things in mind. Maybe as we go through here, you'll hear me say a couple of times, I wanted to do this, but I had no peace about it. Or I wanted to uh, use, use these funds, but I had no peace about it. And so there's different, there's different things that, you know, you need to understand as we go into this, that this is not just Pastor Jay or Pastor Debbie just kind of formulating a plan. No, we seek God. Uh, uh, spiritual leadership is, is uh, submitted to the one who they are called, for, called you know, who, the one who's called them and uh, seeking him what his plan is. I found out whenever it's my plan, I pay for it. Whenever it's his plan, he pays for it. And I found out it's a whole lot better whenever he pays for it. 
And so it's very, very important that you understand that. And uh, we're going to share some things here. I'll tell you what a little bit about what vision is. Uh, I don't think a lot of times people know and realize that uh, when it comes to faith, faith needs to have something to attach to. Somebody yeah. said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. That's exactly right. But that word will give you a vision. Yeah. It'll give you an inner picture of something being different in your life. When you attach your faith to by his stripes you were healed, you're attaching your faith to an inward picture of you up and well and, and walking without pain and fulfilling the will of God without cancer. It'll, see, it'll give you an inner image. You're bound, if you do Proverbs 4, My son, attend to my word, incline thine ear unto my sayings, let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. Their life to those who find them medicine. All the, he, said, he said, attend, put your eyes and ears on it and your attention. If you do that, you're bound to see yourself differently than the way you see yourself in the natural. And what do I mean see? I mean you have an inner picture of you different than the way the natural circumstances say you are. And that inner picture will get you up on the inside before it gets you up on the outside. <clears throat> Amen. It's vision. I don't know that a lot of people really understand faith. Somebody said we walk by faith, not by sight. Not by natural sight, but we do walk by what we see in the realm of the Word of God. What we see, because remember the Bible said, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. We, we do look at something, just not what we see in the natural realm. We look at what is not seen. That's what vision is. It's an inner picture of the plan of God that we don't yet see out here. And you need to have some vision for your life. If you don't see your life different than the way it's always been, you'll never have anything different than the way it's always been. It's not just blindly saying, well, I believe whenever I don't even have an inner vision of it. No, real faith has an inner picture. Real faith sees it on the inside. The, the vision is the blueprint that faith builds. You know, nobody builds a house without blueprints. Right? It's, it takes blueprints. You've got to have the plans. You've got to have the, the, the size of every room and all the, you know, structural details and architectural details and so forth, so forth and so on. So um, without the, the, uh, the plans for that house or that building, you'll never really build accurately. And that's what, the, that's what vision is. It's the blueprint. And faith connects to that. Uh, the, the, uh, the vision is the blueprint and faith connects that to build what you see on paper in reality in the natural realm amen, amen. and so really that's what re vision is it's a revelation of the plans and purposes of God uh, and it's to be honest with you it's the foundation that faith stands on or excuse me it's, vision is the foundation that faith stands on Amen. And so, really, it's seeing with the eyes of your heart what God sees your life being. Yeah. 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 Amen. Do you see your life being any different than the way it always has been? If you don't, that's the reason it keeps going the way it's going. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You'll never become something you don't see yourself inside of that, inside that way first. You've got to see it through the Word of God, through meditating on the Word of God. And so it's just that's what vision is. It's seeing with the eyes of your heart what God already sees your life being because He spoke to you. And it's a revelation from God of the plans and, pur and purposes and also our potential in Him. It's really divine insight into how God sees you. Hallelujah. And it's what faith produces a physical reality out of. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so it's the plan and purpose of God. How many of you know we don't, the Bible doesn't tell us to come up with a plan, the Bible says, or make plans for our life. The Bible tells us to find out what His plan is. Yeah. Find out what His plan is. And so that's what Vision Sunday is all about. I won't take more time on that, but I will say that uh, you do have to mix your faith with vision for it to come to pass. Uh, the, the plans and purposes of God don't come to pass just because you have a knowledge of what that is. You have to mix your faith with it. Amen. So we're going to get into that this morning and we're going to talk about uh, where we're going going forward because, uh, you know, if we're just going to kind of say, well, let's just see what happens in 2023, uh, nothing, 
you have to take direction on purpose for things to go the way God wants them to go. You can't just see what happens. You have to make certain steps in, on purpose in faith to, to dictate which way things go. Anybody glad you came this morning? We could share a lot on that. We have shared a lot on that. I believe, I believe we have a, do we have a series on that? Vision. We should have a series out there. I hope we do. We did some things. We wrote some things on a blog for a couple of, uh, couple of weeks. We wrote some things. Go back and meditate on that. If, that, if what I'm saying kind of, you know, stir something up on the inside of you, go back on the website and look at the blog. There's some things on there about that. And I think we might have some series out there. Go, go on to, the, I got an idea. How many of you like good ideas? Go on to the website. We've got a search engine in there. Where's Miss Katie? If, we, if they put in vision, will the right services come up? Yeah. Amen. Thank Katie and Matt Warner for putting that in there for you. Makes it a whole lot easier for you. All right. So that's uh, just a little brief sum synopsis of what we're doing here this morning. To start with, I want to have the ushers get in the aisles. They have a list of the uh, major events coming up in 2023. Uh, Cameron, could you give me my uh, folder there? I got one inside of there. I'll give this folder back to you here. But uh, hand, uh, hold up your hand if you would like a list of the Spirit of Faith 2023 events. This is the, uh, what we've laid out so far for 2023 as far as what's coming up. Uh, you ought to have this. Put it on your refrigerator. Um, <clears throat> keep it somewhere where it's, uh, you know, whenever you're making your vacation plans, whenever you're making plans for other things, you're, say, you, you're able to say, well, when is that? When is that meeting? And can we go at that time? Should we go at that time? We don't want to miss such and such or this event or that event. So uh, this will be a way for you to have these things always before you. Uh, there's the, the, this is not everything that will be happening, and you can see some dates in here are to be determined yet, but uh, right on the other hand, that's a good start on the, the list of things that are going to be happening. I want to point out a couple of things, and this, by the way, this will be in the lobby uh, on the table or whatever, that, that filing little thing on the wall. This will be out there for you if you want to get more of them later, or if you have somebody else that wants one, you can feel free to get them later but I want to point out a couple of things first of all at the top there you see corporate prayers held the first Wednesday evening or Wednesday night of each month we're going to continue doing what we've been doing in 2022 we're praying things out yeah. praying out the plan <clears throat> there's other times during the week that prayer is conducted of course Monday mornings and so forth and I'm sure you pray on your own at home but we wanted to get these uh, corporate prayer meetings out and let you know when they're going to be just like in the past the first Wednesday night of every month we'll have we'll have prayer right here in the auditorium uh, and so I think that that's kind of become a popular service. People like that. And that tells, uh, tells me you're a healthy church. Praise the Lord. So then that's there. I wanna, want you to see uh, the second one there. Pastor Ike's going to be here ministering on July. This is January. Excuse me. January 25th. That's just coming up. Not this coming Wednesday night, but the following Wednesday night. Pastor Ike's going to be in the house. And so he's getting pretty famous now. We got to keep having him come back, keep him grounded, you know, keep, <laughs> keep his feet on the ground. Keep, anyway, I'm just having fun. But I spent a lot of good time with him this week. But um, that'll, he'll be here Wednesday night. You won't want to miss that. And then you might want to notice down there, skip on down on March 25th and 26th, Richard Roberts is going to be here. Oh, uh, we're excited about that. So that is, I believe that's a Saturday night, Sunday morning. Is it Sunday night also? So uh, I think it's actually, by the way, I think everything's pretty much up on the website now. If you want to go to the events listing, uh, you can go over there and see all the more particular details about that. Let's see here. You see the uh, January has one, February has one, March has one. The uh, 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 Connect with the Vision meetings down at Lee Summit. Then notice down there, April, it just doesn't, it doesn't have a date, it just says April. You see first church service or Sunday church service in Kansas City. Uh, that, that date is to be uh, determined. We, we think we know when it's going to be, but uh, one of the things we are needing to solidify is actually the actual meeting place. We've been working on that, so we're just putting there April for now just to make sure we get uh, <clears throat> the meeting place all set up like, like we need. So uh, otherwise, there's, uh, you can see the, all the other things, the Easter extravaganza, the church picnic, a lot of things on there. Look down through there and uh, make sure you're a part of what the, you know, the life of the church, what's happening here at the church. 
I will say you can see down there in uh, just as summer to be determined Jim camp meeting that's still deter undetermined I've given Pastor Nancy the whole m month of July and August I said you pick in there just pick and so uh, I got other things to announce about that and you'll be excited whenever we get a chance to announce that to confirm several things um, you know the next level events down there a lot of different things so take it home put these things on your calendar if you want more of these uh, more copies of this you can get it from either the ushers after service or in the foyer um, I want to go ahead and give start out by giving some praise reports of some things God did for us in 2022 would you like to start out that way I believe we have a screen of this. These are the projects that were completed, praise reports for uh, the church side on 2022. Uh, first of all, the big offering. How can you forget the big offering? Uh, that, that was a big thing. I, I just, just blessed me. I tell people about it, tell my minister friends about it. They rejoice with us. And so uh, the big offering, thank God for that. Uh, then the East Church Building parking lot was completed. That's this parking lot right out here. We say completed, meaning all the concrete's down. There is some landscaping that we didn't get it, you know, before it frosted up and everything. We didn't get it done. But uh, we'll finish that up here this spring. But that uh, church parking lot was completed. Then we've got the uh, partial completion of the landscaping. Then the, the Derosio De, De Rocio, De Rocio claim is completed. That was a long process. Uh, where's Brian? Brian needs... Brian needs, uh, uh, I don't know, he needs something out of all the work he did <laughs> to help keep that. He took a lot of work off of me. Thank you, Brian. meant a lot to me that you did that. There was a lot of intricate details. Holding the insurance, you know, the insurance, well, anyway, <laughs> praise the Lord. They just, li they just lacked a little excellence, let's just put it that way. And so we had to always work. We, we, we had to do their math for them, let's just put it that way. <clears throat> And so Brian helped me a whole lot. I really appreciate that. So that complaint, complaint that, com, that claim is all completed. We had no complaints, right? That claim was all completed and included new insulation in all the buildings. We found out we were losing a lot of energy through our roof. And uh, so the energy bills were really helped by that, by putting in new insulation. And insurance actually uh, agreed that they were responsible for that. So they did all that. If I told you how much that was, that was over $800,000. And uh, the insurance paid for it all. Praise the Lord. So we really got, I guess you could say, some, some you know, upgrades in the building out of that. And we, we appreciate the insurance company being... Uh, honorable and coming through. Then we've got real estate taxes paid on Wiley. I don't know if you remember when you buy a property, I don't know if anybody bought a house, you got to pay some of their taxes because of the weird thing that Iowa does with their taxes. That We had to pay that $17,000. Praise God, that was paid. Uh, and uh, new sanctuary cameras purchased. You remember that, that, that back there? Really, that was kind of like the last Sunday or so, whatever it was in 2021 and got it all done over in 2022. So I think we ought to just say thank you, God, for all you've done for us already. <laughs> Thank God for it. So faithful, Father, we rejoice. You've always taken good care of us, and we thank you for it, Father. And so um, it's important before you uh, reach for more, you thank God for what he's already done. I want to just keep before you, we won't spend a lot of time on this, but keep before you the vision God's given us to eventually move from this property, these really four buildings here and uh, have a more uh, how many of you uh, how many of you believe God wants us to be under one roof <laughs> and during the winter time not run through the snow and go over and get your youth you know and or whatever uh, I really I believe the Lord spoke to us a number of years ago and said I have a home for this congregation have you been saying that father we thank you you have a home for this congregation and so, so many things uh, God's put in our heart about that. We believe it's a building over there on Armour Drive. We believe we know where it is. We've been in touch with them. And uh, I believe they're going to sell it to us. They just don't know it yet. <laughs> There's a lot we could get into there. But uh, for time's sake, I, I won't go into much more detail about that. There's other things we want to spend our time on. But uh, just always be agreeing with us. Father, we thank you for the, the, the more permanent home for this congregation. Amen. Next, I want to just remind you that here on 4089 21st Avenue, that's this uh, hole in the ground over here, that that building was, remember that building was sort of condemned by the city, and uh, remember the vision I had when I turned the corner, I told you about it, just my, I mean, my mind was on a lot of details, did a lot of office work that day, and it was 6.30 or whatever at night, 
and uh, you know, wasn't thinking about spiritual things or anything. And I pulled up to the stop sign to turn left on Wiley there on 21st. And um, <clears throat> I pulled out into the, uh, the road and uh, got, made my turn and looked back. And the building was still standing there in the natural. But when I looked back, I had a mini vision. Aren't you glad it was mini so I could keep driving? But, <clears throat> but it was a flash like that. And that building was gone. The building wasn't there. I could see all this campus right there looking through the building as if it wasn't there. It was as though that building was gone. I'm like, whoa. I said, Lord, what was that? And he dealt with me. That building is going to be torn down, and that, that property is yours. Amen. Amen. So we claimed it. And how many of you know the first half came to pass? The rest of it is going to come to pass. I mean, the city came out here one day, condemned it, and, uh, you know, there's haggling and stuff, but, but it was all torn down. And, uh, you know, so you might say, well, they need to get that whole field. They need to get... I, that's the way I get sometimes, and the Lord keeps reminding me. I told you I sent an angel to frustrate their plans. Because I look at that, and it's like I, I drove through, came around the corner this morning. I said, well, they haven't touched a, a bucket full of dirt on that thing while I was gone. But I have to keep saying, no, the angels are frustrating their plans. Because they have plans for that, but God's plans are going to prevail. Amen. So I believe that belongs to us, and uh, we're, we're claiming it. So uh, they'll, they'll come around on that. Um, the next thing I want to get into is some update on the Kansas City church plant. Yeah. Um, back in 2022, well, really before that, 2021, I believe it was May of 2021, the Lord spoke to us and said there was a further plan for us there in the uh, metroplex of Kansas City. Instantly I knew it was a church. And um, so we've been making plans. You know about it. Some of you have been down there. We've been down there preaching uh, twice now. I think November last year and, no, is it uh, September and November, was it? So, uh, and we're going to be down there next, fr this coming Friday night again. We've got some people registering again to come from the community there. So uh, we're just continuing uh, to take steps towards that. Right now, I think we've got some pictures of the Gamber Center, don't we? Is that the next picture? Uh, this is where we've been meeting. Uh, this is a community center. I believe this is the official term for it. Um, the Gamber is, is uh, what it's called. It's got a, maybe you can go through the picture or two here. It's got a room inside. Here's the lobby. Uh, it's got a, if you can keep that picture up, people come in right over here. And uh, I guess I got a pointer. I get that. And, that, and this is like a lobby. This is like a, it was a, like a coffee bar or reception area. And then the doorway into the auditorium is right over here. It's a really nice place. I mean, for, for a community center, it's really nice. And I think the next picture has uh, the inside auditorium. There's the inside auditorium. Um, I don't know how many it would seat. 150? 100? 100 in this section without the divider. Right. So, with the divider. With, with the divider. Yeah. So, but uh, this is where we're meeting right now. Uh, this particular building is occupied. They, right now, Sunday morning, I feel like a school teacher. <laughs> but Sunday mornings, this is. Uh, being used by another church in the community and I've prayed and Pastor Debbie's prayed and it just seems like because I, I, I thought I, told, I kept telling the Lord you know it, was, it would work so much better if we did it on, we started our services on Sunday nights and did Sunday night and Tuesday night because we could finish the church service here fly down there be there in time do a Sunday night service and stay there till Tuesday come back start Wednesday, ser Wednesday service here you know yeah. and just I thought man that works so well but I can't get peace about Sunday night down there so it's not about convenience, it's about what the plan is, you know. And so uh, we, uh, I believe God wants us to do Sunday mornings. If that changes, He hasn't actually spoke that, but it's just we're following this peace. How many of you know that's the, that's the way we're led? We're led by peace. Um, but if it changes, we'll let you know. But right now we're planning on doing Sunday mornings and Tuesday nights down there when the regular schedule starts. Uh, this, sir, this auditorium will not be available Sunday mornings because another church is there. It would be available Tuesday nights, but uh, so we're we're continuing to look for a property. Uh, it's been amazing how full the properties are down there, and uh, but God's got a home for us down there. And when we go down, we're leaving here Thursday morning. We'll go down to get ready for the Friday night service down there in this this coming week. And uh, the realtor did call and say, "Hey, we've got some other properties for you to look at." I said, "Well, I, I said we're going to look at some properties then." And, uh, but there is an opportunity, even if it might be temporary. Uh, Brother Andre was there and saw it. Uh, it's a school down there. Some of you that were there might, have, might remember a school, a Christian school down there called uh, Summit Christian Academy. And they have a facility we could use on Sunday mornings. They have an auditorium there. 
And so we're going to look at that and see if that's where we start. Uh, uh, and we'll see here. But God's got a plan. He's got a place for us. And that will all come to pass. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> You say, well, if it's going to be on Sunday mornings down there, how's that going to work? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'll tell you how it seems like we're going to be doing this. It seems like right now that we're going to be, uh, that I will, let's, let's just kind of put a rotation out like this. It's like I'll preach one service here, uh, Pastor Debbie, and, and, uh, and Pastor Debbie will be down there, and then I'll go down there, and then she'll be here, and then the next service we're thinking about live streaming, and then uh, the next service, Brother Andre and Maya are going to help us in Kansas City. Amen. So they would preach a Sunday morning. And so uh, God's really uh, made it clear to us, and we talked to them. They have it in their spirit as well, that they're to help in Kansas City, and they're to be, they're to be helping. And God's putting it in our heart that they need to be uh, even preaching and ministering. And so that's what, that's what we're going to do for right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, how that all works out, we'll just take, take it by steps. But that would have me here uh, three, three services a week, I mean three services a month, right? I believe so, Sunday morning. Um, and uh, Pastor Debbie and us would rotate. And if it has to be, we'll, we'll, uh, we've got people here that can preach. <clears throat> if you've got a plane, hey, my Aunt Andre can fly on that plane too, you know. They can fly from there to here, I mean. They can't just soak up the warm weather down there. I mean, they need to come up here. <laughs> uh, yes, honey. Turn her mic on if you can find it there. Sorry. So when Maya and Andre are there, we'll be here together, and then we're going to, I think, switch off the live stream, like do a one live stream yeah. a month there, and then one live stream a month yeah. here. So, you know, we're still going to be, and we'll be here every Wednesday night, too. Yeah, so. absolutely, because we're doing Tuesday night down there. So we can There's a possibility, you know, we haven't talked about it, but, you know, we have the mentoring class here on Sunday. We might be able to do, like, a Sunday night there once a month as well. So. Yeah. So, praise the Lord, it's going to work. I kept telling the Lord, because I was getting under it. Do you know what I mean? You've never done that. But I was getting under it. I was like, Lord, how do I do this? And, uh, and, and finally, I just had to take my head off of it. And I had to stop struggling about it. And, uh, I, and, and I got, you know, over Christmas, over the month of December, there wasn't as much happening. We were doing a lot of, you know, office preparing for the new year and everything, but there wasn't a lot of traveling. And, you know, so there's a lot more rest time for us. And, you know, you get quiet. It's amazing how things start coming up out of your spirit. Yeah. Just getting quiet one day, it just came out. Just like what I just shared with you about that plan, that rotation just came out. And so um, it seems good, and we're going to just move with what seems good. If something changes, we'll move with God. Hallelujah. So, um, so that's, that's uh, how that will work. Uh, there'll probably be some others that will, uh, in the right timing, move there to Kansas City. And, uh, you know, don't, don't just say, well, I want to be one of them. Well, you know, if you're faithful here, maybe, maybe you can be. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're not and you're half, half soaked and half baked and half helping and half not and half an half a asset and half a liability... <laughs> I never met a pastor like him, Myrtle. Yeah, I know. So <laughs> then we might not use you down there. But praise the Lord. I'm sure there will be others that move there. And, uh, you know, we, how many of you know that's going to be a younger church? A younger, there'll be younger believers aren't as established in the word, you know, and so forth and so on. And they need good examples, not bad examples, good examples. Hallelujah. So we want to, we uh, I'm, sure I'm sure God will have more people move there. But don't just move there and say, well, if I move there, they'll use me. Well, maybe not. We'll see. Pastor's smiling, right? <laughs> and so um, we are uh, looking at, we've already got a budget laid out for some church equipment, a whole sound system and things to do live streaming and so forth and so on. Uh, Brian's probably getting that quote locally here, I think. So we'll see uh, see what that all how all that all comes out. Um, so we are also looking for a church parsonage. Uh, it's not a residence for us. It's going to be a church. Well, we'll stay there, but it's church parsonage. And the reason I say it's a parsonage that means the church will own it or or lease it, depending on how it all works out. Um, <clears throat> because it's not going to be just for us when we're there. It's going to be for all the team that goes there as well. So we need one with you know bedrooms. Some, We'd rather not sleep in the same room with people, so 
Um, so it'll have to have a few bedrooms. And uh, so it'll be used for just whoever's down there can stay there. And how many of you know if you're setting up, tearing down, setting up, tearing down equipment every week, you've got to have a place to store that equipment. So it needs storage for that and, and uh, you know, just a lot, of, a lot of things to think about. So uh, believe God with us. Pastor Debbie's going to spend a little extra time when she goes down this weekend to uh, look for that and look for a house. And I told her, remember, we live in the country and we preach in the city. <laughs> <laughs> Pars, yeah. yeah, she's ministering for Pastor Hernandez down there this coming Sunday as well. So, uh, but no, we don't have to live in the country, but eventually we will live in the country. This house might be more in the city. We'll see. Praise the Lord. Are you all so glad you came this morning? And so uh, that's a little bit of an update for, for Kansas City. I believe all that God's put in our heart will come to pass, don't you? And so uh, next I want to go to J. Eberly Ministries and talk a little bit about that, that uh, side of the ministry. Um, we, of course, have the online Bible school, Spirit of Faith Bible Training Center online. I think we have a screen for that. Anyone can uh, go through that, uh, get the word in them. There's two different tracks of study. You can either say, well, hey, I, like, I want to just, just, you know, I just want to feed on that class called In Christ Realities or Healing or whatever. Uh, and you might just, you, you might not want the certificate for the entire first year or the entire second year. You can do that. You can just, you know, uh, register for certain classes and uh, not try to get the whole certificate for the whole year. Uh, you can go about it that way. And then second of all, you can go through the, uh, the, I don't know what the different names are, but you can go through the, the track where you can get the certificate and for the first year and then go through the track and get the certificate for the second year. And then you'll be a graduate. Wow, that's an esteemed op opportunity you can have. So uh, we actually were out in California this past week preach, I mean, uh, with Pastor Nancy while the conference was going on. And a pastor came up to me and he said, I want you to know, I had met him a time or two before and, and seen him around a little bit, just started coming to some of the meetings. I don't remember where he's from, but he said, I, I, I want you to know that my, me and my son got a hold of your gem vault before we even knew about Pastor Nancy. And we started listening, we got so blessed, and then we got a hold of Pastor Nancy, and now we're coming to her meetings, and, and they said, but we can't get enough of that gem vault, so we're going to your Bible school. <laughs> so they're, they're taking our online Bible school. I believe they start in February. So that, that's being, uh, you know, God's using that, and the opportunity's there for you if you would desire that. And then the, the other things God's doing, uh, Jabberly Ministries, of course, is taking more road meetings, more, more invitations have begun to come in this year. We'll be gone, uh, you know, several different times just out preaching our own road meetings. And then there's, of course, the uh, minister's mantle, which we do both in Nigeria and here. But the main thing I wanted to mention is the Nigeria minister's mantle. We'll be going back over there in October, the beginning of October. I think those dates are on the, uh, the list of events there. And we'll also be doing a Zoom call to, to, to the ministers in Nigeria in June. And so that's one thing that uh, Jim does. Then social media, I want to give you a report. The Jim Vault is there. I just mentioned that. Uh, those tracks can be downloaded or streamed. And uh, that's there just free of charge. The partners make that available. Normally we would sell those products. Well, you can buy them in the bookstore as well. But normally uh, we would you know, only make them available by, you know, hard copy and selling them and so forth. And, but the Lord told me to make them available just uh, free of charge. And just tell people, you know, become a partner and help us support, you know, rather than have the income through sales, just, just have people give as they're led of the Spirit to give. And so many have done that. And uh, this year there was a great increase in people becoming partners from outside of the church. We're, we're getting, we're getting, something's happening. Some things are changing. Uh, there's been a, a shift, and, and it's, it's really, really, really interesting hearing people. Uh, I had one guy come up to me in California. This, we've had a number of people do this. It happens all the time. But a man came up to me, and he said, I wanted to thank you for that, uh, uh, you know, it's on uh, the vault. Thank you for that, uh, uh, well, it's just a single audio, I believe, called How to Keep Your Healing. He said, I'm listening and listening and listening. And he said, I'm up over 150 times I've listened to that audio. I said, well, maybe you can quote it better than me now. So, <clears throat> But that's what that's doing. It's out there all the time. We're sleeping, and it's ministering. Just constant, 
constant ministry happening. People all over the world are, are listening to that. And so I just wanted to give you a report we've had in 2022, the best we can tell, we've had 10,252 tracks downloaded in the vault. That's the downloads. Then, um, uh, let's see here. This is uh, an estimate because we changed hosts, the, the hosting platform that the vault is hosted on in the mid-year. But if the average is worked out through the rest of the year, after the last couple of months of the year, the estimated, uh, uh, let's see here. Is this, uh, is this streams? No, I don't, I don't know. I, I, well, I'm, not, I'm not sure I wrote this down correctly, but 13,700, uh, I think that's streams. I hope I didn't butcher that right there, um, uh, that have gone out through the vault. And 231 series were downloads. Now, the tracks downloads was different than the series downloads. Some, some series have, you know, five, some, some, what, 18 services, 18. So the, the, just the series, counting the series, is 231. And um, these are separate from the track downloads. And so the vault is continuing to minister. It's probably the second largest outreach of the church right now. It continues to bless people. And I'm so thankful. You know, I have no criticism for ministries that sell their products and don't make the, the, the uh, products available for streaming done. No criticism at all. I believe, you know, the workman's worthy of his hire. But right on the other hand, God told us to do it differently, and so we did that. And it blesses my heart to know that people can go get, you know, if they're, if they're needing spiritual edification in a certain area, they can just say, well, let's go see what I can find on the vault, you know. Yeah, and so we're thankful for that and the privilege of doing that. And then that's the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the uh, GEM website. Now, this is the streaming of the services now. Uh, 49 countries have streamed the, web, streamed the services from our website. Not, not, uh, not uh, Facebook and YouTube. We're talking about just the, the, the uh, website. You know, everlyministries.org is it. So uh, 49 countries. Facebook has had 23,333 views of the services. And then YouTube. YouTube has exploded. In 2022, uh, we've had 295,532 video views. That's almost 300,000 video views. And uh, right now it's close to right at, I didn't check this morning, but 7,900 subscribers on YouTube, 42 countries and 27 states. So, uh, you know, you start adding together different countries and different platforms and views and different platforms and so forth. The word is getting out. And we're thankful for that. We're thankful for that. It's not about, you know, having a big number or something. It's about people's lives being reached. It's about the Word getting out to people, and we rejoice in that. And you've helped make that possible. Remember whenever we received the offering for the cameras, you know? Those cameras, uh, that, 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 what we're saying here is going through there to the whole world <laughs> because those cameras are there. So we rejoice in that. And so the average giving to Jabberly Ministries, the average monthly giving last year was 6069 I think we've got a, a, a chart there. And so that has helped to do what we're doing. Uh, and that we've been taking up more of the cost of some of the traveling. Jabberly Ministries has been taking up more of that cost. And uh, some of the tr more, more when we go, like the world, preach at World Harvest Bible Training Center, and when we go out there to uh, different things, uh, there's, there's Jabberly Ministries helping with more of that cost. Of course, our own traveling ministry. It helps with the Gem Vault, helps with the Nigeria missions trips, um, and live streaming ministers, Mantle, and different things uh, that Jabberly Ministries keeps helping with more and more. And we have a goal of uh, different uh, to reach $10,000 a month to give towards J. Eberly Ministries to help continue to expand what we're doing through J. Eberly Ministries. So I know we have many partners here. A lot of you are partners. If you're not a partner this morning with J. Eberly Ministries, you can do that. We'll give you an opportunity to do that. Now let's switch to Harvest Christian Daycare. I want to do, you want to look at some good reports from Harvest Christian Daycare? We have a list of them here. First of all, the uh, enrollment. Uh, uh, well, the first one they missed there, I think somehow or another they missed one of the first ones. The first one I wanted to share was the daycare has no debt. Just, 
all the all the buses you see and everything you see you see the you know facilities and equipment in the rooms and everything all that's paid for and uh, I, I just I just keep it that way as much as we can because uh, I was talking to the banker one day he was talking about how we always pay our loans off and he said well we kind of like you but we kind of don't and uh, <laughs> you know bankers they make make interest off of loans and which they rightly so but uh, they you know we just believe in paying things off <laughs> But anyway, we were talking. He said, you know, it's a good thing that you do that. He said, we see daycares go under all the time because they just keep taking more debt on, taking more debt on, and it gets to be too much. And I said, well, you know, um, it just, we just like to pay things off. So that's a thing to rejoice in. Yeah. Daycare has no debt. We had an average in 2021, one did you see a year back, I've had an average attendance, or I should say enrollment, of 159 children in 2021. And then uh, in 2022, we had an average enrollment of 168. And uh, in 2021, we had 57 children or adults saved. And in 2022, we had 38 children and adults saved. Now we bring that up because that's the main purpose of the daycare. It's a, uh, you know, an outreach to reach the lost. And, we, you know, we do these Christmas and Easter events and Hallelujah Party and things like that. Those are all designed to get people saved. And so we rejoice in the ones that have gotten saved. Uh, this year, 2022, I believe the other screen has this on now, we have significantly increased staff wages, vacation time, and paid holidays and benefits. And uh, we, we rejoice in the opportunity to do that. Amen. And so uh, those of you that are employers, uh, employees said amen. Amen. <laughs> So then, second of all, we've purchased a whole Excuse lot me, of hun. new stuff. I've lost track of the dollar amount that we've spent, but we've had some new uh, equipment and supplies. Excuse me, hun. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> wow, this is great. I can just get right in there. Anyway. <laughs> I wanted to mention that in 2020, our enrollment went way down yeah. because of the, the pandemic, but God brought it back, I mean, quicker, uh, and we're not rejoicing in other daycares going down and under because they did, and, you, you know, and the, but we, we just rejoice because God brought us back and I don't even know what the average in 2020, but it was way down. Yeah, I, so I don't we're just thankful number. for what he's done. Amen. Yeah, uh, the lady that comes through, if it's a DHS, uh, she's mandated to pop in once a year, I believe, and just kind of do a surprise visit, just check out how everything's going and everything. Uh, we've, again, like always, passed with flying colors. There's nothing she even brought up to even suggest we do the change to uh, meet guidelines or anything. But she said, and has said this almost every time, what are your enrollment? And we tell her, she said, there, there's no, I'm, did she say there's not anybody? Maybe there's very few. How did she say she that? That was a number she hadn't heard in a long time. She, that's a number she hadn't heard in a long time. And so God's been taking good care of us, Amen. giving us people to minister to. And uh, I want to thank the staff because they're the ones in contact with the, you know, those uh, children and families, and they uh, represent Christ properly and people trust us and people you know uh, you know they feel safe with their children here and so give the daycare staff a great big hand if you would <laughs> amen but we had the opportunity to get some more equipment if you work here you probably notice uh, more uh, state-of-the-art uh, you know facilities uh, in, in the, and, and equipment in the classroom cr new cribs rocking chairs climbing centers strollers changing stations rugs uh, play kitchens tables cubbies desks pillows bean bags children's furniture playground uh, toys and then and on and on, and on. <laughs> But just a whole lot of uh, things that were needed. And so, praise the Lord, we were able to pay all that cash. Praise God. And we also completed, the daycare helped complete the renovation of the parking lot that the church, um, you know, finished over here. Uh, they also put in a large restroom countertop over in the family center. Some of you might have been in there. That, that uh, countertop over there was getting bad. We replaced all that. Uh, the new bookstore entrance doors were replaced over here. Uh, the, because they were going bad. Um, 
the we had, we needed a commercial refrigerator. We bought um, you know, there's just so many things here, the new new things, lighting outside, and, um, doors, and just things, all just stuff and stuff. Just you know, the daycare puts more. I guess I don't want to call wear and tear because this is a blessed building, right? Yeah. But it it, it gives it m uses this building more than we do as a church. And so that being said, they ought to be a bigger part of taking care of the maintenance, you know. So 70% of all maintenance on the campus, the daycare takes care, care of it. That, that's just fair, right? So, you know, those little blessings that put holes in the wall and <laughs> do what they do. And, yeah, praise the Lord. You help pay for our renovations. <laughs> Now let's look at some things we're going to believe God for in the children's, uh, I mean in the uh, daycare this year. We want to believe God for 185 enrollment. And uh, you know that we should add and some staff to make that happen. <clears throat> Katie's holding a baby and holding up one hand, putting a foot up on that one. Some staff because that's really, uh, that's really a factor that enables us to go to 185. So uh, let's put that on the sheet, Miss Vanessa, and get from Katie how many you need. But then, uh, so that would be uh, our goal for enrollment. And then we're going to believe God for 50 salvations this year. Amen. Amen. And uh, two buses. Yeah. Amen. Anybody, anybody's vehicle here lasts forever? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, even if you're in faith, it still doesn't last forever, right? <laughs> so we're going to need two new buses, and uh, I believe we'll pay those cash. Hallelujah. All right, so just some things you can get in agreement with us about. Um, there's, there's a, uh, I'll just say this. I, I haven't said it publicly, but it keeps stirring in me, and I just had the board meeting this past week, and uh, a particular person on the board made the statement. Uh, I, I, I said this to them, and they said, yeah, that seems like the Holy Ghost. I believe the daycare is supposed to buy the family center from the church. And, uh, and I'll be sharing more with you about that. It just keeps coming to me and just keeps coming to me. So uh, we'll be talking to you more about that and, and why and, and, and so forth and so on. But it's a, it's a God idea. And eventually you'll see that as we spend some time talking about it. Now I want to move on to uh, what we're going to use as a campaign for 2023. What we're going to do as a campaign... <clears throat> um, I, you know, be honest with you for, you know, I've been praying about this. Vision Sunday doesn't just happen because we get up one morning and say, well, let's do this, let's do that. This is a matter of prayer and seeking God and sometimes seeking God for months and getting nothing. And that's the way it was for the campaign this year up until about a week before I left for California this past week. Uh, I was getting nothing for the campaign. I just told the Lord, listen, if you don't want a campaign, hey, we won't do a campaign. That's fine with me. You know, so, but just pray. And I just, I just kept praying and seeking God. And I knew we had to do something about aviation. But I had no, I shouldn't say I had no unction. I just had, it's just like, yeah, but, nah. <laughs> it just seemed, uh, I didn't, it just wasn't quite there. Or, I guess a better way to say it was it was there but that I was missing something it, it wasn't top priority or something I, I, I could tell there was you know you just gotta how many of you ever had something in your spirit but you didn't quite know how to say what was in your spirit so I'm endeavoring to express right now what I had in my spirit but I couldn't quite express it because I didn't quite know how to express it it yeah I believe something needs to be done about aviation but it's like it's it's, I'm, I'm missing something. I mean, the campaign, yeah, but I'm missing something. It's just kind of the best way I know how to say it. And so, hey, I said to the Lord, I said, if you, if, if you don't want any campaigns this year, fine, whatever. Doesn't matter to me. He's the head of this ministry. Amen. And so, uh, before, about a week before we left for California, somewhere in that week before we left, I was praying, and it came so clear to me, so clear. So clear. I mean, it's one of those things, you know, you'd base your reputation on and base 30 years of ministry on it. This came so clear that the reason uh, you don't have much unction about the campaign, especially about aviation, you know, starting a campaign for, the, for aviation, is because before you do that, you've got to sow a seed. I went, duh. <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> and so, so I'm like, right, got it. The next question is, where, how much, <laughs> you know? And so, so I, I just I went to California knowing that, that God wants us to sow a seed. Uh, I didn't know where. I didn't know how much. Except when my feet hit the ground in California, I started getting an amount. I didn't say anything to Pastor Debbie for a couple of days about it. But it was just like standing in front of me. And so uh, it came real clear. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to kind of rehearse how we've gotten to this point where, you know, God is, is taking us into aviation and what it's for and everything. Just to recap, how many of you know, we, many of us know this, but it's good to just keep hearing it. But um, back in, uh, oh, early 90s, whenever it was, uh, mid-90s, something like that, the, I was at a, Pastor Debbie and I were preaching at a pastor's church. We were staying in their home. They actually then took a trip themselves. We were staying there by ourselves in their home after, after the series of meetings. And uh, I, I don't know why I said it. I walked, I, we were both getting ready to go somewhere, and I was in one room. She's in another room. And uh, I don't know why I was thinking about it. I, I don't know if somebody had said something about a, an aircraft or something. I don't remember why I was thinking about it. But I walked over to the room she was in, and I said, you know, maybe, maybe we had been talking about it or something. And I walked over there, and I said, you know, I don't think I ever desire an aircraft for, for our ministry. I thought that sounded humble, maybe, or maybe sounded like being a good steward to God or something like that. And I didn't think much about it. You know, of course, Pastor Jay's right about everything, you know, just if I, that's the way I think, I'm right, you know. And so I went back over to my room and I started finishing hair, uh, uh, blow drying my hair. I'll never forget, it. I'm blow drying my hair. And the Lord spoke up in my spirit. He said, what did I call you to do? Well, back then it wasn't pastoring, it was traveling. Now it's pastoring and traveling. But he said, uh, what did I call you to do? And I wasn't sure where he was going, I, you know called me to be a saint uh you know I, I wasn't sure what he was and 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 he said no in the ministry what did I call you to do I said well you called us to travel he said what did I say if you be willing and obedient what did I say about that I said well you said if you be willing and obedient you'd eat the good of the land he said what's the good of the land traveling he had me I said well it'd be our own personal air Jet. That's the way it came out. I, I, I couldn't get the word airplane out. Is that your own? I mean, if we're going to talk about the good of the land, that'd be your own private jet. You know, once they invent a, a translation machine, then that would be it. But, you know, <clears throat> the good of the land right now is you're an aircraft, a, a jet. And he said to me, he said, if you'll be willing and obedient, then you would travel in your own personal aircraft if you're called to travel. And he said, don't set anything else in motion now. Did you get that? You know, you can start setting something in motion and, and it start coming to pass, not because God didn't have something better for you, but because you set that in motion. Your confession is a limiting factor. It's a ceiling. It can put a ceiling on you. Anybody still there? Yes, so uh, I realized then to not start saying that. Don't start saying, you know, we're, not, we'll ne we're never flying our own aircraft and so forth and so on. That doesn't mean, you know, we're going to go out and buy one next week or anything, but just, just don't set it in motion now. And so we would always say, thank God whenever we need an aircraft, we'll have an aircraft or something like that. Thank God whenever that time comes and so forth and so on. Well... Back in August 9th of 2018, this was actually the morning after uh, the Ramoses were here. They had did a, did a couple of nights service here in Spirit of Faith. And uh, he ministered to me, Pastor Ramos ministered to me by uh, prophecy about the phases of my ministry. And some of you might remember that and talked about different phases and so forth. And... Um, and so, anyway, we rejoiced that and, and received that, all some things I had to pray about, see what, it, see what it meant. But the next morning I woke up, August, I mean, uh, April, did I say August? Yeah, August 9th of 2020, 2018. The next morning I woke up, and I was talking to the Lord about this, about what the, the word that came. And the, the word of the Lord came to me, and He said, You have succeeded at phase two. 
I asked the Lord, and I knew what phase two was, but I asked the Lord, what is in phase three? Before God, Brother Juan, before God, I was not asking anything except about the anointing. What's the assignment? What do you want us to do in phase three? What anointing is... Because every phase has added equipment and an assignment. You know, you go from one phase to another, you, you, the assignment changes. <clears throat> Just like if you raise children and they leave the house, your assignment changes with them. Amen, right? But so there's different phases. And, and so I was asking, he said to me, you've succeeded at phase two. I said, what's in phase three? Fully expecting him to say, well, there's going to be a greater healing anointing and so forth and so on. That's what I was expecting. Yeah. That's what I was expecting. Yeah. Yeah. Fully before God. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you lie, you go, you, 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 you lie, you fry, right? <laughs> and he said to me, the aircraft is in phase three. Yeah. Yeah. He said, it's where fullness starts coming. Now, I haven't always shared that part. But the aircraft is in phase three, and it's where fullness starts coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to say something you have to pay very close attention to, or you'll go out of here saying I said something that I didn't say. Are you still? Do you have your ears on? I grew up on the farm. We had, a, we had an interstate about a mile and, mile, mile and a half away. Interstate 81, and my dad let us get a CB radio, and we talk to the truckers as they go by. <laughs> We'd, I get on there, and I say, Breaker, Breaker 19, you got your ears on? <laughs> Usually somebody, not always, but somebody come back, Breaker, Breaker, this is so and so. You know, we'd start talking to the truckers as they go by. Well, my, I'm, I'm asking you this morning, Breaker, Breaker 19, you got your ears on? <laughs> So listen carefully, because you'll go out of here saying something I didn't say. When he said you succeeded at phase two, I knew exactly what that meant. Phase two is pastoring. He said you've succeeded at pastoring. Myrtle, what did he say? Did he say he's done pastoring? Listen, listen, listen. Listen very carefully. April 9th, 2018. Um, uh, that was... Uh, now, let's go to April of 2010, actually, at the minister's conference. Uh, Dr. Dufresne was here ministering to me, and you can see this on video, if many of you remember it. He walks past me, and he started hitting me in the stomach, and he said, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And the power of God's, every time he'd hit me, I'd jerk the power of God's going through me. He said, you've been in room one, two of your office. Now you're going into the third room of your office. Some of you remember that. And I went out into the spirit and the Lord spoke to me. And he said, that's the last room in this office. Now an office is, you know, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, one of those. He said, you've been in the first and second. There's different, there's different stages within a office. All of us should be progressing spiritually. And ministers are too. They, they progress spiritually through different assignments on their life. And God will move you on as you're faithful. Keep on continuing to use you in greater and greater ways. Amen. Amen. So he said, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. You've been, faith. You've been in a one, two room of your office. Now you're going in the third room of your office. When I went out in the spirit, the reason that Dr. Dufresne didn't say that is because he didn't want the congregation to hear that. But the Lord told me personally, he said, that's the last room in this office, referring to the pastor's office. So I was in that last room of the pastor's office from April of 2010 all the way up to August of 2018. Then the Lord said in 2018, you've succeeded at phase two. In other words, you're done. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Myrtle! <laughs> Is he leaving? I didn't say that. No. According to that statement, I've not only finished the last room, I've finished the pastoral office. Yeah. Amen. The whole office itself. Now, I haven't said this, but you better listen. Yes, sir. Listen very carefully. It's one of the most important things I'm going to say this morning. So, um, 
If you don't listen, you, you'll miss what I'm saying. March 27th of 2019, the Lord helped me to understand this because it was bothering me. He said, because I was praying about this, I said, Lord, what, what are you talking about here? What, what am I supposed to do about this? And he said to me that morning, he said, when you went from teacher, went into the pastoring office, he said, did you lose the teaching office? I said, well, no. No, that, that anointing's still on me. Just keeps increasing. You understand what I'm talking about? He said, you didn't lose that when you went from phase one into phase two. It's just that the pastoral office was added, and that was priority. And he began to operate. The teaching gift started operating uh, in you through the pastoral office. Now, he said, in phase three, it's going to be the same way. I haven't lost the pastoral anointing. Uh, pastoral anointing, it's just now going to operate through a higher office. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Can you see what I'm talking about? Yes. I'm not so much the pastor of these two churches as I am the overseer of these two churches. You got to hear what the Spirit's saying. Amen. He said uh, this to me just a while back. It's not just an open door when he's talking to me about going into Kansas City. He said, this, uh, this is not just an open door into another city. He said, this is an open door into another office. And so you have to understand what's happening here. And I'm saying this to help you understand why the need for the aircraft. Now you say, well, you know, this is just all between you and God. Has this been confirmed at all? Well, I sought God. I said, Lord, you confirm this. And you know, he's confirmed it four different times through four different ministries. If I had time this morning, maybe sometime we will. I don't know if I have time this morning. I want to get into some other things. But if I had time, I could tell you, actually, some, one of it was right here. Pastor Nancy said it right here. I don't have the date in front of me. I didn't write these all down. I, well, I, actually, I do have the date. August 9th of 2018, Pastor Nancy ministered to me and said, you're going to be the part of the beginning of many things, yes. of a foundation layer. Yes. And she ministered some things that went along with that. And then in the back room, this never came out publicly, uh, when Randy Greer was here in April of 2016, uh, uh, if you go look up the service, I believe it's April 25th. At the end, I, I kept sensing, because he, he turned the service over to me, and I took the service. I kept sensing he had something more. I, kept sensing, I said, you got something more? He kept shaking his head, no. Well, I, I, I said, well, okay. He said, we'll just we'll finish the service. Excuse me, finish the service and close the service. So we did. And we went over to eat in the back room, and he said, now, that more part. <laughs> he said, I didn't want to say it in front of your congregation. And he talked to us. I have word for word transcribed because I record. I push the button, record, push, record, push, record. I got it word for word, got it transcribed. He talked to us in depth about what we're moving into. Of course, he's a prophet. He stands in the office of the prophet. He said, well, while I was preaching, I saw it. I saw what you're getting ready to step into. And he talked to us in depth about being over more churches and not so much hands-on pastoring any one of them but being over all of them preaching in all of them but having other people help us in all these churches amen and, I, and he went into detail he described the office he told us what it was and, and he went into great detail about it and there's a whole lot I don't have time to get into then some of you heard this in June of 2021 last year Pastor Chris Cody uh, it, he was ministering one service out in California and at the end he said brother Jay pastor Jay he said God's had you like I don't remember the exact wording right here but some of you heard it and you can go back and read it or, or listen to it he's had you like John the Baptist out in desert places he's preparing you for some more things and he's going to bring you forth and he's going to have people around you raised up to help you doing some of the things you're doing now take some of those things off of you so you can get out into some other things number three confirmation last I believe May some pastor friends of mine and I went to uh, no girls allowed 
went to Colorado for a week. To do what? Pray? No! <laughs> to play. We wanted to play. Uh, we're always praying. I mean, you know, our fellowship with God is daily and regular. You know what I'm talking about. But, but we went out to fish and ride four-wheelers and goof off and just have fun. Eat. <clears throat> and so... Anyway, I flew from here to Denver, of course, getting my flight from Denver to Steamboat. I had a layover, and I texted the group. I said, I'm in Denver. Anybody else here? Pastor Dennis Hadaball said, yeah, I'm here. Let's have breakfast. So we, we had breakfast. We slid, slid in the booth in Elways. You go through, Denver, go, go through Denver, eat at Elways, okay? Just forget everybody else. Just eat at Elways. So we slid in, and... Uh, he said, so what's God doing? And I started telling him what God was doing about starting this second church. And he got, his, he got his finger out, and he said, you're moving into the apostolic. He said, and here's what's going to start happening. And he said, they don't, and he started, I, I don't have time to get into it all. And, and I, I was sitting there, and I'm going, yep, confirmation again. This just keeps being confirmed, just keeps being confirmed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, no wonder the Spirit of God, the, the way He said it concerning phase three, no wonder He said the aircraft is in phase three. Yeah. Because we're going to be starting more churches. The Lord spoke to me. He said, this Kansas City start is going to be the first one. And then after that, there's going to be like a flurry of them, yeah. of churches starting, spiritual sons starting churches. I'm already getting other cities in my heart. I woke up. I don't know, a month ago or so, and one particular city in America is on my heart. I, I just groaned and travailed over that particular city. And, 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 I was, and I was done, and the Lord didn't tell me I was going to start it, but He said, There's a, a word and spirit church needs to be planted there. Yeah. That's what you're praying about. Amen. If it's us, we'll do it, but if it's somebody else, we prayed it out, somebody's going to do that. Well, so I, can you say amen? That, that's what amen. it's time. This, this next phase is time to fully function in this. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so, we're moving towards our own private aircraft. <clears throat> now, you've heard about us. We, we began to move forward towards a 421C, you know, Cessna uh, twin engine. And when I was, I told Justin one day, or I said something in the back room about, you know, it just seems like there might be a step between this and the 421. And Pastor Nancy confirmed that in, what was that? Fredonia? Where was that? Fred no. Anyway, somewhere this past this past fall she said one two three and she started saying there's there's three aircraft and and i all of a sudden when she's when she's prophesied i knew exactly what it was the one we have is number we have now is number one then there's an intermediate one between the 421 uh be, between the one we have now and the 421 so uh we need to switch gears here and i talked to her about in the back room and she said you're right on you're right on so we're, we switched rather than go launching into a 421, first of all, which is eventually what we'll have. But we're going to go, uh, we've been praying and seeking God about what to do before that. And it's going to be a Beechcraft Bonanza. All right, so do you have a picture of the, the Beechcraft Bonanza? Uh, this is a single engine. It, is, uh, it seats, of course, the pilot and then five other people. Uh, depends how much they weigh determines if we can actually take five people you say I want to fly in it okay get skinny <laughs> but this is a Beechcraft Bonanza and uh, I think we've got a couple more pictures here uh, it's, this has been in continuous production since 1947 yeah, I think we've got one more picture. This one has the tip tanks on it, which I'll describe in a minute. You see those little tanks on the end of the, on the, end of the wing. Uh, this plane has been in continuous production through uh, since 1947. It's the longest aircraft in continuous production in aviation history, I believe. It is a, it is a stable little airplane. You know anything about airplanes? Some are stable. Some are you've got to kind of you know fly them all the time this little thing just wants to fly by itself that's the reason it's so successful they've built 17,000 of these things um, and it's continuously in production um, it's from from 1984 uh, and newer they uh, have 300 horsepower rather than 285 it has a piston engine it, you can also get a turbo version which uh, is, is something that I believe we should get, and I'll tell you why here in a minute. Holds five passengers, 
uh, has a useful load, has, has retractable landing gear, has a useful load of, uh, depending on uh, whether it has some of the, whether it has the turbo, whether it has the tip tanks and something else, the baffles on the engine, Justin. Uh, but say it again. That's correct. Uh, if it has the turbo, the, the uh, tip tanks and the baffles on the engine, which has to do with the exhaust, uh, then you can get, uh, you have a useful load of 1,400 pounds, uh, which is 400 more than the normal useful load of 1,000 pounds. And when I say useful load, I'm talking about how much you can put in there. That's after fuel, correct? That's fuel included. Thank you. So now why is this all important? Because it, it this determines how much you can take, how many people you can take, how, many, how much luggage you can take. If you take more luggage, you have to take less people. You know, it's all about weight with aircraft. It's not about the number of seats as much as it is how much you can carry, how much weight you can carry. And so it's a non-pressurized cabin. Above 12,500 feet, you need oxygen, but that's provided, a little thing in your nose, uh, which you, don't, you don't, usually won't go that high unless you get around some storms or something. Um, so you can go up to 18,000 feet with the non-turbo. With the turbo, though, you can fly 25,000 feet uh, uh, high. Of course, you have to have oxygen up there. And you'd also, there, there are certain things you have to be careful of going that high. And you wouldn't certainly just go that high just to go that high. But it has a cruise speed of 100, 170 knots, 196 uh, mile per hour. 196 mile per hour. That'll get you there. 18 to 21 gallons of fuel burn, depending on the engine, turbo, and all that. Uh, average speed to Kansas City, or actually Lee's Summit, I mean, average time to get there is an hour and 20 minutes. Coming back with a tailwind, I mean, you could get back here in an hour. Not, not always, you understand, but you could. So um, that aircraft, is, is we've, we've searched and checked our hearts and looked at different options, and this is the one that seems right for us. Um, it has, and we believe we're to get the one with the tip tanks, uh, the uh, turbo, and I'll tell you why. And also, let me get my pointer here. Um, they have an option on this, and this is one of the main things that finalized my decision. Some of the other competitors to this aircraft don't have this as readily available. I guess you put it on any plane, but these are more, uh, more common. See that leading edge of the wing right there? Um, we are not flying in Florida. We're flying out of Iowa. And there's this little thing that happens in the wintertime. It gets cold and there's ice that forms up in the clouds. And for that reason, you need to have what's called a Fiki system in this particular plane. be Fiki, right? On this one, be Fiki. Uh, that's basically a de-icing mechanism that if ice gets on that wing, ice gets on this tail. Is it the propellers too, I believe? that it will put out like, uh, for you, you'd think of it as antifreeze. Um, but it's a, a solution that uh, makes the ice fall off. It melts the ice. Um, that is absolutely necessary. I won't, I won't, I won't fly this plane in the wintertime, fly in the, without that. Because, you know, you might say, well, you wait till the storm's over. Okay, two things. Those clouds up there, which stay up there 99.9999% of the time. Not, not quite, but... Most of the time in Iowa, you get up there and that can have ice in them that will form on your wing. And so uh, it's just not an option to have a plane that doesn't have that. And the reason I believe we need the turbo is if you get into ice conditions, you fly up, you know, sometimes they'll say there's icing conditions in a cloud layer 3,000 feet above the ground and it's, uh, seven, you know, it's uh, 4,000 feet thick. You've got 4,000 feet that you've got to go through that to get above that. And two things you want. You want to have protection on your wings. And number two, you want to have enough power to do it quick. You want to get through that quick. That's why I believe we need the turbo version. Because a non-turbo version can take you longer to get up there, which gives more time for the ice to form. You understand? There's a whole lot I'm not going into details about, but, but I'm explaining just enough for you so you don't think, well, why don't you get the cheaper version? Because my life is worth it. That's why. So, and it's not like we can say, hey, you know, there's ice up in the clouds today. Let's go tomorrow. When you have a schedule, you've got to be there for Sunday morning. You've got to be there for Tuesday night or whatever. It's not like you can go tomorrow. Today's the day you've got to go. Now, we would never override our spirits. You know, if, we, if, if it's just a snowstorm or something, we'd say, hey, Brother Andre, preach, you know, or whatever. Yeah. So you understand yeah. there's been a lot of research go into this. Yeah. We've done a lot of uh, due diligence. 
uh, and we've done a lot of uh, praying and particularly I, I had another one I would have preferred because it was less money anybody know what that's like <laughs> But yeah, on the other hand, if you can't, uh, if you can't fly in safety, it's not about money. It's about, it's about safety. So, you know, a lot of research has gone into this. And uh, Justin, did I describe that pretty well? You did. Or I did. Thank you. <laughs> so, but um, anyway, so let me kind of give you a little bit of uh, Information here. The turbo version, now this might sound strange. You might say, what on earth is he talking about? I'll, exp I'll explain this. The turbo version, now the way they describe the cost of an airplane is, I'm talking about how much it costs to use it, you know, ongoingly, not the cost of purchasing it, but using it. Are you all still here this morning? Yes, sir. I'm going into detail just to let you know. We've done some due diligence. We're not just flying by the seat of our pants. That was, that was funny, flying by the seat of our pants. But, um, but, <laughs> the, the, the cost of operating it is usually calculated per hour. Every hour in the air is going to cost you this much to operate it. Now, they do that because you're burning fuel when you're in the air. Um, and just, and, and, but there's so many things calculated into this cost. I'm going to say this, how much it is, and you might think, what on earth? Why is it that high? I'll explain why it's that high. This one would be, if we had the turbo version, probably about $710 an hour to fly it. You say, why on earth? I mean, you can get there on gas in a car. Yeah, but it takes you five hours, and you're doing it every week, yeah. there and back. It's time to redeem the time. Yeah. Now, why on earth is it that high? I'll tell you why, because calculated into that is everything. The, the, if you have a payment on the plane, we'll see. <laughs> if you have, uh, you, you got to have insurance and a new pilot, the insurance is pretty high. Justin's going to get a lot of hours. That'll come down. Uh, you got to have a hangar for it. Uh, you got to buy the fuel, right? What else, Justin? Call it out. Oh, maintenance. Thank you. <laughs> he didn't even say it. Um, every year you got to have an annual inspection on it. And that could cost, I don't know, $6,000, whatever. It changes depending on what they find. So that, that is calculated into that 700 an hour. You want to just put that back, put that back, get ready for your annual. Tell me some other things. Yeah, so the fuel. Fuel. The maintenance. maintenance. You have propeller, propeller maintenance. You got maintenance on the propeller and the engine. You have airframe maintenance. Airframe maintenance. You have your direct operating costs. Yep. You got your TKS fluid. TKS fluid. Yeah. Insurance. Insurance. Yep. Two hangers, because we've got both ends. We're, we're talking to Monticello. In fact, we've got a meeting is it next week, or we're looking to get a meeting. Yeah. Anything else? That's not including the pilot. Yeah. Right. Right. He's going to have to come on staff right. to fly us. Yeah. But uh, so anyway, I just thought I'd give you that information. Good. Does it help you? Yes, um, so we had one... This was ooh, two months ago or less. One we saw, oh, sweet, 1982, but it had the, the uh, new engine with 100 and, excuse me, 300 horsepower. I think it was turbo. Uh, it was an older plane, but it had the newer engine, turbo. It had the Fiki system for DIs. It had the air conditioning. It had, I'm looking for all the things here I wrote down, but it had everything we needed. And we just weren't ready. We didn't have the hangar lined up. We didn't have all the information about his insurance. And, and, and I told Justin, I said, they called us and said, it's not on the market yet. Are you interested? And we're going, yeah. <laughs> but we just weren't ready. Um, and it's now under contract online. I, I would like that plane, but we'll have to see what happens. So the, uh, God's got one for us, though. And so these can be purchased between, oh, that one that, one that we saw was 399000 which I thought was a good deal. Really, really a good deal. That might sound high to you, but it's, if you know anything about aircraft. And so uh, just to give you an idea, if we were to buy a brand new one, which is actually a uh, brand new Bonanza with you know zero hours on the engine, brand new avionics, G1000 avionics, and, um, <laughs> custom interior and all that, uh, de-icing and everything would be extra, but just new ones are 1.1 million. 
but uh, we'll get us one that's probably in the range four to six hundred thousand somewhere in there. Amen. 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 So uh, I say the range because you know you can get one. Let's say you get one, but uh, the engine's almost out of time, and you got to rebuild the engine. Well, the price will be lower, but then you got to build the you got to you got to rebuild the engine. So so many things vary. It depends on how you buy it, whether you buy it already maintenance already you know has a lot of hours left on the engine and so forth they really have a lot of strict uh, guidelines you have to you know re overhaul the engine after so many hours and stuff like that so anyway I just thought I'd share all that with you so we're going to this morning start a campaign for this excuse me yes <laughs> the other thing that we forgot to put on there is we will have to have a car so yeah, we, down there we have. We that. did not put that on the list, so we right. need to make sure in our yeah. believing. Yeah, amen. Yeah. So um, the way we're going to do the campaign for this aircraft is do what the Lord said. First of all, you got to sow a seed. Yes, sir. <clears throat> amen. And so uh, I told you about going, or the Lord saying before we left for California, I need you to. The reason you're not getting much unction is because first of all, I want you to sow a seed. Yeah. Right. I said. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ringy dingy, of course. You know, it's just the way God works. So I said, okay, we'll do that. Lord, show us where, show us when. And as soon as I got to California, it started coming to me. It started coming to me. And I kept sensing uh, the board needs the, I'm on FOF board, Pastor Debbie and I, or I am, I should say. Uh, and we're helping Pastor Nancy with all these things. And I kept thinking, I need to get the board together and talk about this because I'm getting in my heart it's time for Pastor Nancy's airplane well you know some people just do things real quick I tend to do it I think, I, I'm, I'm taking steps and David Ellis just jumped out there in front of me you know <laughs> and he got it anybody see that service on Tuesday night I believe it was Tuesday night um and he, he got in the Holy Ghost, and I had been getting an amount ever since I landed in California. And he got up there, and it all, you watched that and saw all that. And I leaned over to Pastor Debbie. I said, anything they're saying, I'm not responding to it out of hype or emotion. No, I'm not accusing them of hype. I'm just simply saying, I, I'm not doing any of what we're getting ready to do out of hype or emotion. I'm doing because the Lord already spoke to me about it. And I said, God's been saying to me for three days now, or however long it was, he's been saying to me, $50,000. Right. Right. So into Pastor Nancy's plane. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't even, it's not even publicly announced yet, but uh, they announced 827000 was either coming in cash or pledges. Now it's over a million. Yeah. A million dollars. Yeah. And uh, her plane will not cost a lot more than that. Yeah. So praise the Lord. But we were part of those pledges. Because yeah. I'd done, I done already, already done it. Yeah. I done pledged. Yeah. Wrote, wrote it on an envelope, $50,000. Yeah. Yeah. So 2 Corinthians 9, 10 says, Now he that ministers seed to the sower, get that, God ministers seed to the sower, both ministers bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Praise God. I want you to see, according to that verse, He's not only a God who provides our needs, He said, I'll provide you with seed. Yes. He ministers seed to the sower. Yes. Now, you can be a sower and believe God for seed. You can be an eater and believe God for what you need to eat. God will God will meet you in both ways. You're both, on both sides of that. Well, we've, we've operated on both sides of that, and this time we're going to operate on the side of sowing, believing God to sow a seed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, the first 50,000 that comes into this campaign, first 50,000 is going to go to Pastor Nancy's plane. And so, um, the, I don't know if there's a church, does the first screen show, uh, I, I, I don't know if I have the screens right here. I don't want the screen up with the amount on yet. Do you have a screen about the seed sowing campaign without the amount, or am I missing something? They're looking at me. They don't know. Anyway, we'll do the one, the, the next screen that shows how much the, the daycare and the uh, church has already 
uh, pulled together to put towards this seed. Do you have that screen? $42,370. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's going, I don't know, something tells me before we go to lunch today, that might be 50,000. <laughs> but that's going in a check as soon as the full 50 is in the bank. That's going in a check to, to Pastor Nancy's ministry to fulfill the pledge we've made, the promise we made, because we're good for our word. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to uh, send that out. That leaves a balance of only $7,630 to finish up that pledge. I think that's easy peasy, don't you think? So notice up there what it says, phase one, Defraying Ministries Aircraft Seed. Phase one of the, of the church campaign for our aircraft, phase one is Defraying Ministries uh, Seed. We're sowing that seed. So then as soon as that campaign, as soon as that uh, phase is finished, then we'll go to phase two. Can you put that screen up? Uh, that's phase two there is acquisition of the church aircraft. And you say, what's the goal for the total amount for that? Uh, because we don't know the exact cost of the aircraft, we're just saying whatever it takes to get the aircraft. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Amen. We'll, we'll be led of the Spirit, whether we just pay cash for it. Uh, we'll be led of the Spirit, whether we take out a loan for it. You know, uh, you say, how are you going to do this? We're going to be led. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> because I can't tell you right now. I'll tell you what I, I, I sense. I sense some people outside of the church are going to help with this. Amen. Yeah, that's one thing I had happen in California several times. People come up and say, hey, I heard about your airplane. I thought, praise the Lord. <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know I was putting out the word that much. But, but, <clears throat> but anyway, I just sense there's going to be some things happen and people outside of the, hey, amen, there's a seat. People outside of the church, uh, partners, JWA Ministries partners, people that just are being blessed with this ministry are going to help us take this, uh, take this by, by faith. Amen. Amen. I talked to, um, actually, I talked to Pastor Debbie about this. I kept saying, there's a way here. There's a way. There's a way. I, 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 I can just see it. I, can, I can't tell you how yet, but I can tell there's a way. And I said, well, maybe we could sell the land on Highway 13. I talked to a commercial realtor, and the commercial realtor said, right now it's worth 480000 I thought, ringy-dingy, there's the answer, of course, except I go to prayer and there's nothing. I was like, God, my idea. I had a good idea. You said that's, that's, it's there for the taking, but you're not going to build there. I said, if it's not part of the plan, the money's for the plan. Come on, Lord, I'm arguing my case. Nothing. You ever heard crickets? Cheep, 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 cheep. So I said, well, okay. We won't do that then. And so, because we bought that for 300000 How many of you know that the church made 180 right there? And I had no unction. So I talked to the banker, see if I could talk him and me, maybe he, the banker, me, and could gang up on God. I said, he and, the, he and I talked to God about this together. I said, Mr. Banker, I said, uh, we're, the church is going to buy an aircraft for the church plant we're doing. He said, you know, I said, you know, how would you look at financing an airplane? He said, well, you need about 25% down. I said, what would be, I said, what if we sold that land? He said, well, you could do that. I said, what if we don't sell the land? Would you give us a loan against the land, Highway 13 land? Uh, and we'd, he said, yeah, that'd be a better interest rate than you would just, just borrowing it for the airplane. I thought, there's my answer. Yeah. Yeah. Went to God, Lord, I got my idea. Here's my plan. Jeep, jeep, nothing, crickets. <laughs> I'm not saying he won't say anything, but I'm just saying he hasn't said anything. So I thought, but yeah, but the ca I want to pay cash. I don't like loans. Loans, the interest are going up. You know, blah, blah. So, so I had the board meeting last week with Pastor Nancy as part of the board, and I said, Pastor Nancy, here's, here's my idea. I said, and the realtor told me, because I asked him, I said, it's, he's, he said, it's worth 480000 That's probably somewhere in the range of what we're going to be buying the aircraft for. I said, uh, the realtor told me that uh, if we, if we uh, 
so uh, he told me if we sold that land before it's 480 he said but he also told me that we could borrow against it and I said um, so I'm thinking about maybe selling it I'm trying to talk God into it you ever try to talk God into something you say why don't you just do it because I'm, I'm submitted to him so I said to Pastor Nancy I said God hasn't said anything but he said, I'm thinking about selling it and I said the realtor told me just the realtor said just so you know just so you know he said within five to ten years that area is going to pop yeah. Pastor Nancy looked at me and said you don't need to sell that land yeah. right. 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 answer yeah. so we're not going to sell that land <laughs> hallelujah. hallelujah so I believe there's somehow it's going to work I don't think we're going to be taking out a huge loan on an aircraft somehow something's going to work Praise the Lord. So uh, I just am going to present this and just let you know what we're doing. Um, he's been dealing with me about right thinking about some of these things. I'm, I'm out of time this morning to really talk about it. But we do need to think right about it. Amen. You know, we, we, our thinking limits God sometimes. We think, well, I don't have that kind of money. I didn't ask you for any money. I asked you to believe God with us. Amen. Just believe God with us. And if he tells you to do something, we're going to offer you the opportunity to become a pledge, or to, to pledge this morning. Um, then do it, fine. If he doesn't tell you anything, fine. If you, if you want to do something, fine. If you don't, fine. Praise the Lord. We're looking to God, right? He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. Now let me just say a couple of things about the... Uh, the uh, a private aircraft you might say well you know what's wrong with driving back and forth with Kansas City that's a lot of money okay you do it then I insist you pastor both churches preach on Sundays Wednesdays Tuesdays and drive one day each of those each week drive one of those so you're down from seven down seven days down to five days you're preaching two of those days and you got to do you got the rest of the office on you for the rest of the week. Then you you, you rest somewhere. You know, I'm not going to do it. Just not going to do it. I, I'll, I'm willing to do it to start because faith does whatever it takes. But I'm not going to just lay back and say, well, no, we're not going to believe God for an aircraft. So it's important that we think right. Amen. Amen. Um, th th here's something that the Lord spoke to me most. Making Amplified says Ephesians 5.16 making the very most of the time buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. King James says redeeming the time. In the ministry the stronger the anointing gets on your life you have to run faster. You have to do more. And airplanes are just simply a tool. They're not a toy. Somebody came up to me after a service one time. We were talking about the aircraft. And they said, you're going to enjoy your new, new toy. I looked at him right in the eyes. I said, it's not a toy. It's a tool. Just like an office desk, a computer, or a printer. It's a tool. Amen. It's just simply a tool to recoup some time and uh, preserve your body. Amen. The older you get, the, more, the less you don't want to travel. It's the truth. I don't blame her. Mom's 80, getting close to 81. She doesn't want to travel a lot. I don't blame her. But if you have the right means of travel and you get all this craziness in the airlines off of you, it's not near the hassle. Amen. So it just saves time, preserves your body, and the Bible says to redeem the time. Um, really, time is more valuable than money, especially if you have something more to offer people down here on this earth you really have to uh, realize what's more important time or money and so you, you, you have an infinite amount of time I mean you don't have excuse me you don't have an infinite amount of time and so wisdom would say don't spend things of greater value on things of little value don't spend all your time spend money to redeem the time does that make sense Money's a lot less valuable than the message. It's a lot less, less valuable than people's lives. Listen, I struggled for a long time. Lord, I pastor in two churches. Give it, let me give it to somebody else. I'm 56 years old. My body doesn't necessarily like to do everything it, likes, it used to like to do. But we've got ways to get around that to keep, keep the pace. Amen? 
Hallelujah. So there's a lot here. I won't go into it all, but it's a protector of the anointing. An aircraft is a protector of the anointing. It's to preserve our bodies. It's to redeem the time. And uh, just like churches need buildings, people that travel, they need tra transportation. And I know some people criticize that, you know, because, you know, they, they have this idea that, uh, you know, it costs too much. Well, um, it's interesting when they go to the doctor and they need an MRI. They never criticize the doctor for having an MRI machine in his office. And the Lord gave me that illustration one time, and I looked up, because he used that illustration about MRI, I looked it up. I said, how much is an MRI machine? And on the line it said between $1 and $2 million. So there's a machine there in his office that can look inside the body or however that works and help that doctor figure out what he needs to do to save that person's life or whatever. Amen. And nobody ever criticizes him for that. It's a tool to do what he's doing. Yeah, I'm a pastor. He's saving lives. Duh. <laughs> it's amazing how they don't criticize people in other professions. Or they don't criticize. I'm going to get a little mean on the devil and unbelief right now. They don't criticize Hollywood stars if they have their own private jet. But you let a minister go after something like this and people start criticizing. Listen, what some people call waste, God calls wisdom sometimes. There was a, a lady that came and broke an alabaster box on Jesus' feet and it was of great price. J Judas and the other disciples that said, criticize. And Jesus said, leave her alone. And if you read the context, he's basically saying, she brought her honor to me for my burial. What some people call waste, God sometimes calls honor. And so there's a lot of things we could say, but we'll just leave it at that, right? Hallelujah. People's thinking gets all twisted up about things like this. And they have their opinions. But, you know, um, uh, I don't really, in as, as much kindness as I can, I don't really care what people think. I care about hearing, well done, now good and faithful servant. If we're to plant churches, if we're to be doing all this, then it's going to take this. Amen. You know, the doctor will send you a bill for that MRI machine, but we won't. It's called free will offering. Free will offering. Amen. I don't know if you realize that the world of commercial air travel is getting worse and worse. Um, we ministered under a real strong anointing in Fireball, California in 20, 20, 2016, maybe. And dealt with the spirit trying to get Hillary Clinton in office. You said you're getting political? No, I'm dealing with the spirit behind it. And I'm telling you what, that was something else, quite an experience. And uh, on the way home, it took us 36 hours to get home. That thing didn't like that. And if you're using a system in the world, uh, you know, transportation system in the world system, Satan has more access to that. But when you own it, you have more authority there. And uh, those kinds of things have happened more in more recent times, more. Sitting all night. Well, we actually got a hotel, but half the night in an in a airport. It's happened a couple of times recently. Just because of what we're doing, the devil doesn't like. But we, we can take ownership and exercise more authority. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to go ahead and, and end with that. Um, so if you would like to be a part of it, no pressure, just whatever God tells you. The ushers, I believe, have you handed out any pledge cards? The ushers have pledge cards. If you want to pledge, take a card and, um, and uh, just pray over it. I think we gave you till January, what, 20, 29th, 25th, something. 29th to uh, fulfill, uh, not, not fulfill that pledge, but to... Uh, let us know or, or make the commitment and turn the pledge card in, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And so you can uh, pray over that. And let me encourage you, be in unity if, if you, you know, you're married. Be in unity with your spouse. Uh, one of you shouldn't be saying, I believe I'm going to do this, and the other one's not in agreement. Be in unity. You know, these kinds of things should not put strife into marriages. 
um, you know, it should be something you pray about, that you get, get an agreement about, and uh, because God's not going to rob from your marriage just so you can do something huge, you know. You need to be in unity about it and just let God talk to you. And uh, just do whatever he says. You don't have to, you say, well, this is a big need. I guess I need to give big. Do whatever he says. Whatever he says. Uh, and God will make up the rest. He'll take care of us. You believe that? You believe he's big enough to handle all this? I do. Especially because it's getting so big in my heart. I can almost go like this and taste a, a, a aluminum aircraft metal. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's getting big on the inside. So uh, there, if you're, you, you might have noticed in the packet that they're handing out, there's a, a GEM uh, partner card. If you want to become a partner, if you're not a partner with GEM, you can do that as well. If you're already a partner, you don't need to fill that card out. Um, but that's just there for you in case anybody wanted to become a GEM partner. Um, let's see, am I missing anything? Okay, thank you. Uh, we have not printed the new envelopes yet, so if you give towards the aviation campaign, uh, we'll let you know when the 50000 is completed. But uh, start putting it on the other line until the new envelopes come out. The new envelopes will say, Jim, Spirit, no, Spirit of Faith Aviation uh, campaign. But um, until that, just use the other line and put on their SOFFC aviation or something. We'll know it's for Defray Ministries if the 50000 hasn't been met yet. Um, so... I, I will say this, this was going to be a gem aircraft, Chamberlain Ministries, but because of the way the, Lord, the, the way the Lord dealt with us about starting churches through this church, it's not going to be a church aircraft, yes, rather than a gem aircraft to be a church aircraft. Does that make sense? Should have said that, I, I let that slip by me. All right, praise the Lord. Anybody want to shout a little bit before we go? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Stand up with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We lift our voices. You're a big God. You're more than enough. Father, you haven't asked us to do anything that you have not taken care of the need and not met the need. We trust you in this. We claim the aircraft. We lay hold of it. We believe we receive it. We thank you for it because you dealt with us about it. Father, you've given us clarity about what it is and the kind we need. We thank you for guiding us, and we thank you all the money comes in Jesus' name. Father, we receive it by faith. We say, Satan, you take your hands off the money for this aircraft. We receive it by faith, and we claim it by faith. We claim the aircraft, and we say, Satan's hands are off of it, and we say, angels, go and bring the aircraft to us. We receive it by faith, and we re rejoice, we praise you. We thank you for every need met. We rejoice, Father God, and we'll just from now on, every time we think about it, we'll just lift our voices and say thank you, thank you, thank you for that aircraft as a tool to finish the work you've called us to do. We give you all the praise for it, Father. We give you the honor and the glory. You've never failed us. You've never forsaken us. And Father God, you will never in the future forsake us. We're, we're trusting in you. Our eyes are on you. We give you the praise. Father, we have no pressure on us. We have, we, we're not under the weight of anything. We, we have faith and we rest in the finished work of Christ. You're able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. Hallelujah. We praise your name for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you say, I can't get my head around that kind of expense, then take your head off of it. Yeah. Don't struggle. Yeah. Don't struggle. Just, every time you think of it, even if your mind says, there's no way, you just say, all the money will come, or we, the aircraft will come in the name of Jesus. Just don't struggle. No sweat, no care, no sleepless nights. It's not worth it, right? God's got it. He's taking care of it. And we just, finish, we just rest in what he's doing. And uh, I tell you this, if you get unction and, you, and, you, and you're supposed to pray, then pray in tongues. Just help us pray it out. God will deal with people. I, I sense there's some, some things already in the works in the larger body of Christ. But however God wants to do it. Amen. I'm just going to keep the joy the whole way through. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We praise you and worship you. Hallelujah. Let's give him a shout before we go. Hallelujah.
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We rejoice. We rejoice. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you. You've never left us or forsaken us. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, people hear these kinds of things all different ways. You want to say something? Oh, yeah, thank you. I'll say that in a minute. Uh, people hear these things in all different ways. They, they, they take what we're saying as pressure. This is not pressure. If you took it that way, just dismiss that out of your mind. Amen. If you can't give, if you feel like, uh, well, they're trying to pressure me to give, so I guess I need to give. I insist you not give till you get past that. It needs to be something you do from here. Not under, you know, pressure or, you know, whatever people think. Amen. I want to be a part of what God's doing. And, and if, when you get to that place that you want to be a part of it, then do whatever God says. But just take the pressure and, and throw it away. If you heard it that way. People hear it different ways. You know what I mean? Praise the Lord.